everyone. Uh, this video that I'm going to do today was requested by someone on one of my other videos and I thought it was a really good idea and that or maybe I came up with the idea. I honestly don't remember. This video is going to be about my craziest work stories that I have so far. So um, for those of you who don't already watch my channel, I'm a wildlife biologist and I'm going to give a teaser so you watch till the end of the video. But my final video is about me and when I got attacked by a cougar. Four kind of crazy stories to tell. I'm gonna talk about two stories first that happened while working on pipelines in Alberta. And then the other two are going to be stories from when I worked down in Bolivia. In oil and gas, there is a lot of really sexist men. But most of the time, I'm the only woman on my construction site. I've had a lot of really fucked up stuff said to me. When I was talking to a chief inspector, who's like the head guy at one of our construction sites, and he was like jealous of me because I mentioned that I couldn't stay late because I was having a dinner with the project manager of the project, which is like a very normal thing. And then this guy, he's like probably old enough to be my dad. And he looked me up and down and he's like, I sure wish I had tits like you so I could get meetings with the project managers. Are you kidding me? Like, do you want to listen to what you just said? Sexism is alive and well in the oil and gas industry. That stuff still happens and it's awful and horrible. And next I'm going to do my second crazy story and I'm going to switch over down to Bolivia and talk about the time that Amazonian rats almost gave me the plague. To give you a little bit of context, I worked at an animal sanctuary in Bolivia and that was the very first foray into wildlife biology. So this was a place where we were uh, working with rehabilitated mountain lions, um, jaguars, monkeys, and pretty much helping them like get re-released into the wild. A lot of the work was really just like feeding them and giving them enrichment um, so that they can live happy lives um, in captivity if they can't be re-released. -re so I worked at a field station and we, also lived on site so we had like bunk beds in like beds made out of hay and we would um, like sleep there eat there everything was cooked for us one week there was this huge protest that blocked off like the main road leading into town so we couldn't get our bottled water for the week we all kind of had no choice but to drink the water out the tap we like started off boiling it at first, but then we got really lazy and just like started drinking it. A little while after that, we all started getting sick and pretty much everyone was like barfing and having diarrhea in like the entire camp. And someone's like, uh, okay, something's like going on. We investigated a few other things like the food and everything and it looked fine and normal, but the water tank, we're like, okay, let's go look. So someone climbed up to the tank and like opened the top and like looked in and they s described it as like, a foot of black sludge like on the sides of the tank and there was like dead amazonian rats floating on top <laughs> oh we had to go to a clinic and like get a shot i don't know if it was like an antibiotic shot or we all felt better a little while later so uh, i probably have um, some weird carrier for some amazonian rat disease or something like that here's my other one it's gonna be on a pipeline in alberta and this one was when I was working as an inspector. I would make sure that the pipeline companies were like following all the rules. Um, you can watch my, how I got my job as a wildlife biologist video. I'll link to that above where it's like my very first video. So don't judge like my video quality. I talk about more about that job and how much it sucked. We were drilling underneath uh, a river. Someone had told me that there was a huge release of drilling fluid into this water course. Long story short, we couldn't clean it up. I had to call it in to the regulator and the regulator decided to do a site visit for uh, on my pipeline and to inspect it to make sure everything was going okay. So I was really scared because these are really, really high stake visits. And he kind of inspected my site and I was like, like nervous. And so we were kind of making small talk when we were moving to one um, area of the site. I had mentioned I was from San Diego and then he said, Oh, I was like just in a conference in San Diego. I was like, Oh, that's cool. Like what was the conference for? And he mentioned, 
Um, oh yeah, it's like a conference for this one like specific type of experts in science, like the most random like emissions type thing. And I was like, oh, like my cousin, she's like a leading expert in that field or something. And it turns out he had hosted the conference with my cousin. And let me just give you some context. San Diego and Northern Canada are <laughs> nowhere near each other. So the fact that like this guy had just spent a week with my cousin and we are now on like a remote work site together. I ended up passing the inspection. I'm not gonna say that it was because of that, but that was just a weird coincidence. My final story, and this is probably my most impressive one, and that is about the time that I got attacked by a cougar in Bolivia. So as I talked about in my last story, I used to work at an animal sanctuary in Bolivia, and I worked specifically with three cougars, and they were rescued, and they were household pets, so they were actually pretty good with people, um, or we thought they were. They had like a big enclosure and I was going in to feed them. So if you just think about like a little house cat, imagine it 20 times the size and it has big claws and big teeth. Little house cats don't care, they'll just scratch you and they don't care. But these big ones, they scratch you and it really hurts. So I was supposed to move one of the cougars from one side of the enclosure to the other side and she did not want to move. So I like fully put the blame on myself, but I was getting frustrated pushing her, like trying to push her into the enclosure. And she didn't like that. So she jumped up on my back. She bit my arm scratched the back of my neck and then like the back of my shoulders. I had turned around and there was like a fence near me. So I kind of hit like hit my back against the fence. She was still on my back at this point and to like kind of get her to latch off of me. So I finally got her off of me and then she felt, she looked like at me like really bashful and kind of was like, I'm sorry. and I looked down at my arm and I was like, uh, yeah. I should probably go to the vet. And I had like two holes in my arm and they were like from the bite marks and then like scratches on my back. So I hiked back to go see the vet and he's like, mm, yeah, okay, let's put this purple stuff on it. And like maybe it was like a Spanish language barrier. It was okay, but it never really fully healed. Still have a scar, I'm gonna see. That's one tooth mark right there. And then there's another one right there. So it's just like the two little bites right here. I think they're so badass that anytime we have like a scar discussion come up, I'm always like, okay, I have the most epic scars. I have that one. And then this is like way less of a long, cool story, but I got bit by a wolf on my butt too. I worked at a wolf sanctuary and uh, one of the wolves was, was into asses and I bent over and then he kind of came over and like nipped me on the butt. If you are one of my 77% of watchers that has not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button below and the little bell um, to watch more videos. I am doing a new series on, I'm calling it like my wildlife career series, but it's also really relevant for people who are um, interested in like an environmental or scientist job in general. And I'll link above the first video in that series and follow me on Instagram at vegan below zero and thank you for watching.